Hey, Diane. Hi, Paco. How are you? I'm okay. Here's some mail. Okay, thank Package you. For the chance, so. Perfect. Bye. Diane! There you are. You got in your hands out the mail? Yes, sir. Listen to this. You can just hear the provost in there. Hating it. Here's your mail. Get to work. Hey, hey. Mm, bills, bills, junk, junk. Dude, what are you guys protesting? We're protesting the, the destruction of the albino squirrel population here on campus. No way, really? I've never seen one of those on campus before, the albino kind. Exactly. The last known albino squirrel sighting at TCU was in 2003. No way, dude. 2009, seven years. What happened to him? He was poached. Poached like all the others. You know the only animal poached more in the United States today is the albino blue jay? I'm pretty sure it's a dove. No, man, it's a blue jay. No, you meant a dove. Excuse me, what is going on here? Well, I was just explaining to my colleague here about the uh, current issue with the albino squirrel pot. I can handle this, Thomas. Go hand out pamphlets. Squirrelies. Dude, why'd you piss your pants? What? How dare you demean one of my workers? We are trying to create awareness for a very good to anything I'm saying? Oh, it's, I'm sorry, uh, what was your name again? Charlie. Charlie Gogreen. I'm a sophomore and a civil activist. I didn't know sophomores needed an activist. <laughs> oh, excuse me, officer! Is there a problem here? Well, yes, officer. This young hooligan here has been interrupting our peaceful demonstration with an immature prank. Did you say prank? Yes. Are you Hank Jester? Yes. We've been looking for you. For me? For what? We have reason to believe that you were involved in a prank this morning on a high-ranking administrator at this university. You're coming to the station big time. Killer trike, man. So, should I just walk beside you, or? Yes. Give me your hook. Oh. Okay, yeah. I get it. I get it. Earlier this afternoon, student lawyer Grayson Howe successfully won another case. This time, defending freshman business major Todd Bowen in what was dubbed the trial of the semester. Now we'll go live to the courtroom for a short interview with Mr. Howe. Well, you know, I just did what I always do. Win. I win, plain and simple. It's getting to the point where the other guy doesn't even have to show up anymore, <laughs> you know? What's your secret, Mr. Howe? A lot of lawyers would say it's having solid testimonies from your witnesses, hard evidence, or a good closing statement. But if that were the case, why would all these other guys be losing all the time? <laughs> I'll tell you what my secret is. I look at the other lawyer, stick out my index fingers and say, gotcha. 
That was Grayson Howe with his personal secret to winning, and you heard it here first. Back to you, Katie. Thanks, sis. That Grayson Howe sure is something. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Am I free to go yet? Yeah, today you are. Really? How come? You got lucky, that's how come. The chancellor's not person charges. He's decided the school needs to promote student government more. Your sentencing will be left up to trial by your peers. Here's your court date. Awesome. You're due in a week. Don't get too excited. Next time you do something even slightly out of line, you're getting locked up. So you better watch your ass, cause I'll be watching you. So we're both watching my ass. That seems inefficient. Enough with the smart talk. You don't have any chances of winning anyways. It's all a big popularity contest. And who's gonna root for you? Now see, that's not what you told me before. You told... What do you mean our fraternity doesn't haze? Carter, how am I supposed to write a scathing expose if there's nothing to expose? <laughs> See, I don't have time for this. I don't. I tell you what. Why don't you call me the next time you find yourself shirtless in your neighbor's backyard, hunched over eating a big pile of steaming dog feces, involuntarily! Involuntarily! Wow. That was specific. Read about it in a magazine. What can I do for you? Bob Efford, right? Who's asking? Perfect. Listen, I was wondering if I could get your advice about something. Shoot. I'm having problems. Legal problems. Oh, really? What kind? Legal problems. You know, the... I pranked the, uh, the chancellor. So now I gotta go to student court so that I don't get expelled. Kind of problems. Ooh, those are the worst. Don't I know about it? But here's the thing, I'm told that it's a big popularity contest and since you're a big time staff reporter here at the Daily Skiff, I was wondering if you could maybe write an article or two about me. You know, get my name out there. And yours. Okay, I'll do it. But I got one question. Why did you do it? I don't know. I guess it's kind of hard to explain. People generally want an explanation for these sorts of things. Well, maybe the judge is gonna go easy on me and not ask for one. Yeah, I don't see that happening. Listen, without an actual reason for your actions, winning this case isn't gonna be easy. In fact, it's probably impossible. I can write some articles to create some awareness for you, but I don't really know how much good it's gonna do in the end. People traditionally use newspapers more for paper mache projects and wiping their own ass more than getting the news. Still, it's appreciated. Do people usually pay for this kind of thing? Or? I don't discourage it. Yeah, there used to be more coins in there. But I emptied it so I could go to Coinstar, so my friends and I could go to Winstar. Afterwards, we went to Carl's Jr. <laughs> Naturally. Come on. We're going for an ideal walk. Wait. Oh, I got an idea. Please, a penny for your thoughts. We need to make sure that you're out there. You can't just be in the newspapers. No, no. You've got to be on the television, in classrooms, on flyers. Everyone on this campus will know the name of Hank Jester and how his right to prank is being suppressed by the man. If we spin this right and make you look like the victim here, this could be huge. Um, this could be OJ. No, uh, this could be MJ. But uh, after this uh, Saturday. Saturday, it's going to be all about the HJ. <laughs> that cost a lot of money. Nah, we'll do it on the school's dime. I've got the newspaper's credit card. Well, if they find out about it, they're not going to give you any quarter. And we'll just have to pass the buck. We'll say some doofy sophomore did it. Speaking of sophomores... Will you be attending? My friend. I wouldn't miss it for the world. 
I'm yeah. sorry. He won't be able to make it. Yes, I can. No, Hank, you can't. You're too busy for an anti-anti-abortion rally rally. You've got to prepare for your trial. Oh, a trial, huh? Is Hank Fester finally getting in trouble for his pranking after all? Uh, it's Jester, and no, I won't. I gotta go to court, but it's not a big deal. Oh, it's not a big deal. What are you gonna tell the judge? I'm sorry I put the chancellor in white clown makeup. It wasn't my fault. What? That's not even true. Next time you think about amusing yourself with one of your childish pranks, consider other people's feelings. Then maybe you'll think twice next time. If you'll excuse me, I have to go invite more people to the rally. People who actually care about others. You're really into that girl, aren't you? No way, dude. She's a total doof. Yeah, I know what you mean. I interviewed her once. She said I couldn't write my way out of a canvas bag. <laughs> what? Dude. So do you really think I stand a chance? I mean, I've done a whole lot of hilarious things to a whole lot of people on this campus. Listen, Hank. I know you're concerned, and I, I want to shoot you straight. I'm the smartest guy I know. I got a ton of information in this brain of mine. A lot of it. <clears throat> and if you were to transform my brain into a book, it would be called the Encyclopedia Bobtanica. And it would retail for $1,000. And if you were to crack the spine on the volume for the letter U and look up the word underdog, do you know what you'd see? Nope. People love this guy. They go nuts for this kind of story. Everything's gonna work out. polemics on campus this week, with many of the student population finding his actions noble, and others thinking he should be expelled. His trial is set for Saturday. Does the judge have the balls to let him stay, or will Hank Jester get the shaft? Who's been messing with my copy? For example, how many of you support Mr. Hank Jester? Well, I know that you think you're a star. Jester. A large crowd has gathered and... And here he is now. My name is Hank Jester and I'm here to recruit you. Four days and seven minutes ago, our police force captured me for pranking the Chancellor. But I am not a crook. Eek benign prankster. Today I feel like the luckiest man on the face of this campus, and here's why. I had a dream that one day all the little freshmen and all the little sophomores would be able to prank, and that they'd have nothing to fear but fear itself and expulsion. But I cannot do this on my own, my fellow students. Ask not what Hank Jester can do for you, but what you can do for Hank Jester. Should we win the day? Tomorrow will no longer be known as Saturday, but as the day TCU declared in one voice. We will not go quietly into the nights. We will not stop pranking without a fight. We're going to live on. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Thank you. And guess what? You've earned a new puppy. Wow, what a speech. This reporter is thoroughly impressed. Back to you, Katie. See you guys later. Well, you've got charisma. I'll give you that. You think so? I didn't write any of that, you know? Yeah, I could tell. Still up to your old pranks, I see. Yeah, I, I didn't know you were going to show. Yeah. Well, I had some free time. Listen, you... Want to go grab a bite to eat? Can't have a rally till late. Well, how about after? You're done. Midnight. I don't eat after midnight. Ah, like a gremlin. <laughs> yeah, it's not the only way I'm like a gremlin either. Whatever you do, don't get me wet. I mean, um... Yeah. I got it. 
So, um, you gonna come to the trial later? I might. I might. See you later, Fester. It's, um... It's... Yeah, I got it. Had a pretty nice turnout, buddy. It's all you from now on. I think I've got it, man. That's gross in hell. I didn't know he was the prosecution. Of course he is. He's the best student lawyer on campus. I don't even know why you're defending yourself. You should have got him before the school did. He wouldn't have taken the case anyways. He hates me. We were potluck roommates my freshman year. I was an amateur prankster back then. I needed practice, so I practiced on him. Every single day. What's wrong? Here's what's wrong! Well, if you don't want people to punch your ass, maybe you shouldn't be writing it on your clothing. What the hell, how? Quit laying around! Frisbee! That would do it. My, my. Hank Jester. In trouble for pranking, of all things. What a surprise. Well, what can I say? I live for it. If I had it my way, I'd prank the whole world. I heard about the fast one you pulled on that rally last night. Don't think you'll be so lucky with the judge. He'll know exactly what kind of person you are by the time I finish my opening statement. All rise for the Honorable Student Judge Douglas. Please, you may be seated. The court will now hear case number 002. Jester versus Texas Christian University. If the prosecution can make his opening statement, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Honor, we are here today not just to discuss whether or not this man is guilty, and he most certainly is guilty. But to talk about the security of this campus. Do you honestly feel safe knowing that this menace could pop out of anywhere to embarrass and demean you? Literally anywhere. A door, a window, a sewer grate, a shower that you are currently using. He could do it. You know how I know? Because he's done it. 
I have here a complete record of Hank Jester's escapades on our campus. It goes back three years to August 2006. January 21st, 2007, sends out an email to all incoming freshmen telling them it's tradition to streak on campus on the first day of school at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, leading to Fort Worth's highest number of public indecency charges since the Naked Rodeo of 1969. August 18th, 2007, administers a campus tour to potential students, informing them that TCU leads the nation in both touchdowns and murders. October 5th, 2008, after the opening of Brown Lupton University Union, or the Blue, organizes a meeting entitled Info for Nymphos in the Blue Ballroom, during which he passes out free birth control pills and condoms, which were later discovered to be Pez and balloons. Does this sound like someone you want on your campus? Putting bubblegum in your hair. Peeing in your soda. That soda. Impregnating your girlfriend? Ladies and gentlemen, none of these is a prank Hank Jester has necessarily committed. But none of it is out of his grasp either. Thank you. Now the defendant, please. Ladies and gentlemen, though I'm guilty of many of these pranks, I feel I have done no harm in performing them. Please don't expel me. Thank you. Take that, Al. That was it. Was it? Was that it? Your Honor, I'd like to call Miss Diane Matthews to the stand. Mr. Howe, if you could please conclude your statement, please. Ladies and gentlemen, over the past three hours, I think I've made my point. This gentleman here has no business on this campus. In my opinion, he has no business on this planet, but we'll leave that up to a different judge. Um, okay. Look, um, the, the thing about pranks <clears throat> is that, <laughs> ethically, I mean, the, the thing about pranks is, th is that I, I don't really uh, see any. Ladies and gentlemen of this fine university, after today, I'm sure that you'll think of me as nothing more than a no good prankster. But please, I implore you, don't base your opinion solely upon a manila folder. Listen to my side of the story. A few of my pranks have had positive effects. Sam, Sam Jordan. Sam, if it hadn't been for that pig that you found in your bed wearing your pajamas, you would have never lost all that weight. You lost 200 pounds, man. You look fantastic. And, uh... Mo Molly, Molly McGovern, if I hadn't broadcast Tina Messing getting busy, sorry, Your Honor, with your boyfriend on the Jumbotron during the football game, you never would have broken it off with that douchebag. Tina Messing. Tina, 
if I hadn't broadcast you getting busy with Molly's boyfriend on the Jumbotron during the football game, you would have never found that breast lump. You've been cancer free for eight months now. Go ahead, clap for her, folks. <laughs> Granted, not all my pranks have had such beneficial effects, but at the very least, they serve to lighten the mood and to tell us not to take ourselves so seriously. Take Grayson Howe, for example. Grayson has never pranked anyone in his life, and he is miserable. Pranking is what sustains us. It's what keeps the world spinning. And if you think about it, pranking has been a part of America since even before this country was founded. The Boston Tea Party. The moon landings. Hell, <laughs> the only reason Bush won in 04 was because of a flash mob. People, what I'm saying is this. Pranking is not only necessary, it is a fundamental human right. Expelling me from this university would set dangerous precedent for the future. But if you condemn pranking, what's next? Jokes? Riddles? <laughs> Laughter completely? No. This will not stand. Your Honor, I beg you, before you make your final decision, consider a world without pranks. Now, does that really seem like the kind of place you'd want to live? Thank you. In the case of Hankelstein Roscoe Chesterfield versus Texas Christian University, This court finds the defendant not guilty. What's all this about? You did it. I'm so proud of you. You stood up for what you believed in, for your constitutional right. Maybe you and I aren't so different after all. So, uh, what happens now? I'll tell you in a second. Just <laughs> 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 <laughs>